Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com and this is part 8 of our Selenium Automation with C Sharp video series. And in this part, we're going to work with page object model in Selenium with C Sharp. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 7 and page object model in Selenium part 5 of our Selenium Automation Framework Design and Development playlist of our Execute Automation channel. So this is a completely different video of a separate playlist of this channel. So if you watch that particular video, then you will have a greater detail and understanding of what page object model is and how things work in POM of Selenium. So here is the URL. So this URL I will paste in the description of this video of this video series. So you can just navigate to that particular video and you can understand the greater detail of POM. So the only change in Selenium Java and Selenium C Sharp is the way we set the identification property for each and every controls. In Java, we call it as annotations and in C Sharp, we call it as attributes. In Java, we specify using this at find by and in C Sharp, we specify find by using the open and closed square brackets as you can see here. And the rest of the syntax is as same as Java, but there are few other changes so one of them in Java is in POM of Java, it works fine even if we don't specify the at find by attribute since by default the Java POM picks the web elements by their ID or name specified in the name of the property in the POM class. So while we specify the property name, the same is taken as the ID or name of the at find by attributes of Java. Whereas in C Sharp, the same option is not available. Rather, it throws you no such element exception. Similarly, in POM Java, first identifies the element using its ID. And if it fails, then it tries to identify the control using its name. Whereas in C Sharp POM, it identifies the element only with the ID, but not with name. So it doesn't know whether you have a property called name because C Sharp only identifies the element using its ID but not with name right so these are some of the other few changes with selenium POM with Java and C sharp so other than that there is no other major changes since in selenium C sharp also you have something called page factory and init elements so all these things are going to be pretty same as like Java so if you have already watched the video of part 5 of selenium framework design and development playlist video then you will have a clear understanding of what I am talking about page factory and other stuff so let's not waste our time and flip to visual studio so this is the same project which we worked in part 7 of this video series so whatever we have did here is just perform an operation to open the website exitautomation.com demo site slash index.html and then we performed some operation like selecting the drop down entering the text and clicking a button right but the problem is we have passed all the values like title ID, mister, and what is the identification type, everything right here, right, as a hard-coded way. So what happens if tomorrow the title ID, which is nothing but the ID of the control, changes? Instead of title ID, I want to change it to title IDs or just title, right? So if we want to do that then surely in automation we will have exception since the id of the application has changed so we have to go back here to our code and again we have to change it right here so that the code will work fine that's fine for just one single control but what if there are 100 control changes altogether so every time we have to babysit and change the values wherever the control has affected again you may not use the same control in just one single place you may be using the same control in 100 different places who knows so changing those control IDs is kind of very tedious option and that's why in order to unify the system of object identification across your automation testing page object model was introduced it is a kind of design patterns where you separate the object identification in a separate class and operation in a separate class files right we'll talk about page navigation in greater detail in the next video of this video series but as of now just keep in mind that we are going to separate the object identification in a separate class file as we do in Java. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate class file here by right clicking the project hit add and class and let's call this as ea page object.cs right so I'm going to hit add here 
So this will going to have all my execute automation page objects. So it's going to hold just the page objects for me. So again, as exactly like Selenium, we have to use the at find by rather here in C sharp, we'll call it as just find by with square braces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write for the title ID. So I'm going to declare an element for title ID. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a property. So for auto implementer property, just type prop, double tap, it will bring you up this thing. And here I'm going to declare it as I web element. And we know that whatever operation we perform in the control, it's all going to be I web element type. And oops, I web element. And here I'm going to give the name as title ID, right? So let me add the reference control dot. Mm -hmm. It's not coming. All right, so the next thing we need to do is to add the attribute finds by. So for that, I'm going to open the braces and type finds by, right? So within finds by, if you open a bracket, it's an attribute, right? So if you can pass the named parameters here, like custom finder type, how, priority, and using. So I'm going to use how named parameter type. So how is equal to, there is an enumerator available. So how dot. So how I'm going to identify this? So using ID, right? That's how I'm going to identify. So if you put how dot ID, it will identify using its ID, and then just put comma and there is a named parameter called using. So using is equal to. So what is the ID of it? So let's go to program.cs, and here the title ID is title ID, right? So this is the ID of the title. So I'm going to pass this as well. That's it. So as you can see, this title ID will be identified using its ID. And the value is this, right? This is how you can identify the element. Similarly, you can identify a text box initial using the same way. So here, the initials name is this. So I can directly pass this. So how dot name, and this is the name. And here I can pass txt initial. Right, and this one you can give it a different names here like this, like DDL uh, title ID, so that you can tell that okay, this is a drop down list box. Similarly, this is a text box. Similarly, for a button, if you're specifying, then try to give a meaningful naming convention for each and every controls. So for text box, it is txt initial, drop down is DDL title ID, and similarly for button, it should be btn save, whatever it is. So I think it's save. Right, so just give a meaningful naming convention for them so that you can easily identify that. So this is going to be identified using its name property. So I'm also going to pass this using name and this is the name. This is button save. Great. So these are the three controls which I've identified using page object model. And then what I'm going to do next is I need to initialize these controls using page factory dot init elements. Right. So for that, as usual, we need to create a constructor. So you can even type public uh, EA page object, and then you can do all these things. Or there is a shorthand form in C sharp. It is nothing but C T O R. Right. So if you just bring that up, it will add your snippet for you. Just press double tap. It will add the constructor for you. Right. And then you need to add the page factory. So there is a page factory, as you can see here. Page factory. Oops. What's that? All right, so page factory dot init elements, right? So you can directly init the element. And here there are two overload methods. One is the driver and another one is uh, page. And the next one is driver, page, and I element locator factory. So we can use the first one. So here the driver, again, we need to pass the driver's instance here. We have already created the driver's instance in the property collections.cs in our previous video of this video series, right? So property collections is where we're going to hold the driver's instance variable. So I'm going to call this guy. So property collections dot driver. So this driver, I can pass it right here. And comma page. So I'm going to initialize this page. So we can directly call the this keyword here. So this will initialize my page. That's it. Super simple. So this will initialize my objects within this particular page. So this will end our page factory initializations.
and also the declaration of page objects in this particular page and then let's go to the program.cs and now as you know in page factory this whole thing is going to change so whatever we have hard coded these values is going to completely change so instead of using the custom methods I'm not going to use the custom methods as of now because we are going to change this custom method as well in a different shape altogether in the upcoming part of this video series so as of now just bear with me I'm going to just comment this whole code out rather so instead of custom methods I'm going to call the inbuilt method which is available in Selenium C sharp right so what I'm going to do is first as I told in page object model we need to first initialize this page so we need to first create the instance of this page and then perform the operation so for that I'm going to first initialize the page by calling its reference right so ea page object so let's say page is equal to new ea page so this will initialize my page and also all its objects great and then we need to perform the operation using this page right so page dot you can see that it brings me up all the properties which we specified out there and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type a value in, in the initial text box and I'm going to click the button so title is title ID is going to be a drop down so this is going to be a completely different scenario altogether so I'm not going to work with this control as of now because this is going to change a little bit while we start to work with the modification of custom methods which we wrote already right so we'll work in that particular video of this video series but as of now we're going to work with only these two controls right so page dot txt initial right so this will be of type i web element so if it is a type i web element then surely if we put dot it will bring me all the methods available for the i web element so if i put dot it will bring me up the send keys can you see that so similarly you can see all the method which is used for i web element everything is coming right now so for that i'm going to do dot send keys of i can directly type the value here see it is very simple right now I can directly pass the text here like execute automation right that's it so it is very simple right now so this this whole long code is now shrinked to just one line of code with just one parameter here which means our custom method should also be changed right now this is not going to be this case which we did already so as of now just sit tight we're going to work with this way and then once we start working with the modification of custom methods you can understand what else we can do from there right and then we need to perform the click operation for the button save so button save dot and there is a method called click that's it very very simple that's why page of the model is chosen for its clean and simplicity right so I'm going to save it and right now if I execute it will type the value out there and also perform the operation click right so let's go to the test explorer and let's run this selector test so this will open the browser and it will navigate to the page and did you see that it typed the value execute automation into my browser right so this is how things works using page object model so you have completely separated the page object in a separate class file and similarly you have performed the operation in this particular class file and that too is very neat and clean so we'll talk more about this page object model in greater detail in upcoming video of this video series but as of now this is the introduction and this is how you perform the operation using POM in Selenium with C sharp that's it guys so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day